Amiga game guide and review. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at Hybris, developed by Corpcom and published by Discovery Software in time for Christmas 1988. Hybris is currently being played in the Lemon Amiga International Games Competition, so if you want to join us in the Super League, have a go. These are my current high scores, and I'll be attempting to beat those during this playthrough. You can see as the coin-op style titles roll, we get to see the authors of this game. The main designer and the main coder was Martin B. Penderson. Martin is probably better known for creating Battle Squadron on the Amiga, which was released in time for Christmas 1989, as well as the demo Hit the Road. The graphics were created by Torben Bekeger Larsen, who also worked on Sword of Sodan on the Amiga in 1991, and also moved on to the Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall in 1996. And the music is credited to Paul van der Volk, who also created Poing on the Amiga in 1993, as well as many soundtracks on the mod demo scene, including the Imploder series. Pressing fire, we return to the title screen, and from here we can choose our commander. There are two commanders to choose from, JP Maverick and K. Lovett. It doesn't matter which one we choose because they are identical, and having chosen, we are thrust into the game itself. Hybris is a vertical shooter in the same vein as perhaps Galaga, with extra backgrounds on there, and games such as Xenon on the Amiga. The difference in this game is we gain power-ups and we gain different configurations of power-ups as we progress through the game. I'm actually playing this with auto-fire and the auto-fire on the zip stick, the native auto-fire there, but if you haven't got auto-fire on your controller, well, you can always choose to have auto-fire through the emulation or there are other means as well, but I definitely recommend auto-fire for this game as a minimum requirement. Our rate of firepower will also depend on many factors, with the first one being our position on screen. Below the middle of the screen it will fire very slowly, and above the middle of the screen and towards the top our firing rate will increase. Periodically we will also find energy cubes, and by blowing those up that will upgrade our ship to the number it says on that energy cube, and in this case it's level 2. By pressing enter, or by waggling the joystick left and right, or even manoeuvring that in a circular motion, without holding down the fire button, that will trigger an extra power up, and that turns the level 2 firepower into the super weapon. This is the standard level 2 firepower, but by waggling there I can activate the super weapon. The main difference is the super weapon, i.e. the extended power up, can blow away those enemies on the ground, and you can see Sometimes those ground forces are defended by shields. The ordinary firepower can't actually get through those shields, those barriers which actually flash on the screen. And you can see me there, if you don't have any of those shields to destroy, then the normal firepower is fine. But if we find those energy barriers in our way, the only thing we can do is to get through those to blast away whatever appears behind, otherwise they will continue raining firepower targeted in our general direction. So you can see there, I've been hit a number of times, that's degraded by firepower all the way down to level zero. You can 
can see, the shields that we had on the left and the right have disappeared. And the higher power up factor we are on, the more shields we'll acquire. So you can see it's important to not get hit, otherwise we will degrade. But you saw that I collected another energy cube and that's raised our firepower back to level 1 and by rotating that stick again that will give us the expanded firepower. Periodically, at least twice per level, you'll find a glowing mechanism there and by colliding with that it will actually increase our firepower. If we can collide with that three times then that will give us three times our usual firing rate. Against these enemies, you can see three times the firing rate means these enemies are pretty easy. The enemy attack patterns, just like Galaga, don't really change, and once memorized, it's easy to get rid of those. You just have to get rid of those glowing missiles as best you can by simply blowing away the enemies before they've had time to launch those. And if you can, just hold down fire, pray, and hope for the best. Sometimes those shields herald some ground guns and they can fire on target but the most important thing in this game is to maintain our level of firepower and that means the other enemies which appear after this will be easier to shoot down. You can see it's very easy to toggle our normal firepower and the extended blasters there appearing in orange so if in doubt try the extended weapon but we only have three extends on any one of those weapons and they appear as E's and once those are used up we cannot collect any more luckily when we collect the second power up or when we die we will gain those E's back there that will give us another three firepower extensions halfway through this first level of the three levels that there are in this game you'll find a boss and what we have to do is to target the side pods of that alien and they will disappear. If in doubt, press the spacebar a number of times to release the smart bombs and once the side pods are destroyed then hitting that alien in the center will send that thing off the screen. You can see S's there on the top and they indicate that we have two smart bombs that we can activate either by holding down the fire and waggling left and right furiously or if we don't hold down the fire and just press the space bar they will activate but it's good that the player can activate those things with the joystick and look at that firepower upgraded to level two and yes the more firepower that we can have again the easier these levels will be and the easier it will be to blow all these aliens away if we complete an entire sweep you can see there it gives us a thousand credits bonus and so the more we complete the entire wave the more we'll gain that bonus credit once we enter the 100,000 barrier that will give us a free life and then we will also gain an extra life at 300,000 and at 600,000 and every 300,000 after that so it's a good idea to accumulate those lives but don't be too gung-ho at this point because there's no point wading into the action and let the enemy come to you. If in doubt, always upgrade before you face difficult firepower bosses like this and then it makes that job so much easier. But if you get hit once, then that job will not be easy and you can see those shields, the blue shields left and right will actually absorb missiles and bullets heading our way so it's a good idea if you are being hit to aim those things on towards the shields and then hopefully you won't lose the firepower just like that. Taking a look at the comparison zone, obviously this game is modeled on games like 1943 there, to which the Amiga version has the classic music. I also want to show you Wings of Death, which is another hidden gem on the Amiga back catalogue. Energy voice sound effects when we pick up different items and the graphics are really smooth there. Turn into Gemini Wing, that makes Gemini Wing, the arcade conversion, pretty weedy. So let's take a look at Battle Squadron, the follow-up to this game, which many players say is the greatest Amiga vertical shooter of all time. Unfortunately, they didn't say the same about Frenetic there, and they said the action was a bit too fast, even though the graphics and the scrolling are very, very smooth. So that's the comparison zone, and you can also compare this to Swiv and Xenon and things like that. Meanwhile, on the Amiga, I'm drifting down there trying to pick up as many of those power-ups as possible to speed up our bullets, because we are still on level 1 firepower. So 
level zero fire power will give us the pinky red lasers. Level one will give us this blue laser. Level two will give us a green laser. Level three will give us a blue lightning bolt. And there is also level four with a very big energy laser. And level five with purple lasers, which we shall see later on. At this stage, the most important thing is to avoid those enemy bullets because we do not want to be knocked down to zero grades yet again. And it's a very long, hard road at this point if you're not put down to zero. And even with level one firepower, it's only just possible if you know where the enemies are coming from and if you stay above the halfway point of the screen. That enables you to collect that extra firepower. Let's just try and sneak in there before we get shot down. We are, we've made it to the end of level one. So we can take on that boss, but we have three smart bombs remaining. So let's use those against that thing. And that makes the job very much easier. After that, we'll be collected by our mothership and we can return back to the base. And after a brief congratulations screen, which you cannot quit, unfortunately, no matter how much you press that fire button. But after some time, the machine will take us on to the second of the three levels in this game. As each level begins, the fire will be delayed slightly, but we can move left and right before we start to fire. And that's a little disconcerting to have the fire delayed there. But on this overseas level, the enemies do come thick and fast. And you have to really memorize those attack patterns, otherwise they can make a meal of the player. Again, the shields return, and the same ground guns return, and the same Goliath-like enemies appearing in various patterns. Some of those are very easy to negotiate, and some of those are not. Again, for the big scores, you really have to be clearing these waves, but these green, very easy aliens there herald the hardest wave of them all. And so as we collect the third upgrade and we extend our ship, this is the hardest wave of them all on level two. And you'll be faced with this three times. These aliens appear from left and right. So I think the third upgrade, extended as it is, is the best way to get rid of those. And if you can maintain this weapon and the extension, then this level is pretty much easier. But if you downgrade and you are on weapon one by now, or weapon zero, then that will be very much harder. So you can see I'm choosing to use those extensions there because of those barriers in the way, those things are indestructible unless we use the extend. And then we can simply get through those. Unfortunately, I held down the fire button to waste one of our smart bombs. You may notice that we get three smart bombs back at the beginning of every level. So you might as well waste those at the end of every level. And the lightning there on level three power up is terrific. It really means the player can have fun with this. The bullets don't move pretty much more quickly. In fact, the bullets move at the steady rate all the way along. But you can see there yet again, those very, very hard enemies. I'm using that extend to get rid of those. So sometimes it is very satisfying to get a complete bonus there of 5,000 if you know the patterns and if you know how to get through this game. But if you use all your extends just like this, then you will find yourself alone until you find the next power up. And that gives you another three extends. On level four upgrade, you can see the extension will give us rotating shields. And that makes us 99% invulnerable. That means we can move wherever we like on the screen and hoover those aliens up just like they don't exist even collide with those at point blank range and that won't harm us one little bit. You can see on level 4 upgrade I'm using the smart bombs again to try and get rid of this boss and hope that that doesn't touch us but if we should use the extend there that will get rid of the boss and that will mean that we are perfectly invulnerable to the boss's bullets. Unfortunately there is a big gap there and you will only have a certain time limit to use these extension weapons before we revert back of the normal weapon and so dead time in this game isn't appreciated because you have to use those things and you can see reverting back there just as the hardest enemies appear so with level four firepower and that invulnerability shield that means we can get through those attacking things appearing from the left and the right but again you have to time those things so that you use up all your energy 
just before the next power up upgrade appears on the screen. That means you'll be given three more extensions and you can continue ad infinitum. That's right, if we collect the level 4 or the level 5 upgrade, we'll be virtually absolutely defended with those shields all around the ship. And collecting the level 5 power up there just makes that job slightly harder because when we activate the level 5 by pressing enter, that will actually give us a less effective firepower than the level 4 which gave us complete shields but you can see the shields wrapping around that craft there and all that will happen if we get hit is that we will downgrade back to level 4 with the complete invulnerability shield so the tactic to get far in this game is wait until you have level 4 and keep it and if you do upgrade to level 5 then if you get hit then that's no big deal because you go down to level 4 and that gives you the invulnerability shield so let's just activate the level 5 and you can see there, a great effect, but again, if we are hitting the side, well, some of those enemies will be destroyed by that shield, but sometimes if we are hit, then we will revert back to level 4. You can see by activating level 5, that gives us a very nice wide spread, and that only lasts as long as the other upgrades, only maybe a minute or so, and you really have to use those within that minute or 30 seconds, however long those things last and then you would revert back. Luckily the level 5 firepower there, the ordinary one, is pretty damn strong. And that will get rid of enemies first time, every time. Unfortunately even with level 5 those barriers prevent our progress, so let's upgrade. But we will not get, from level 5 we will not get any more energy containers, which reveal more upgrades. Level 5 is the top, so if we want to gain any more extensions, we will have to be hit. That will knock us down to level 4 and then we can wait for the level 5 upgrade to appear again. So that means that we cannot progress infinitum there until we get hit. There you go, level 4. That gives us the shield. So hopefully now we can just wait for the next energy container and that will give us the upgrades for free. I was first introduced to Hybris way back in the 1990s when a good friend showed me how to play the game and I never actually touched it since then but I always wanted to and so I'm glad that this has come up in the Lemon Liga game competition so that allows me to practice it. You can see just a little practice holding on to those weapons it is possible to get far in this game and I really appreciate the rotation aspect of the controllers so that we don't have to lean forward and press too many keys on the keyboard. But I definitely appreciate the smooth scrolling and the playability of this game. There aren't too many enemies and those attack patterns once memorised are predictable and so I wouldn't say this game is a pushover but it's certainly easier than games with random enemies and random attack patterns at every opportunity. So it makes progressing through this game fun and the player will always get just a little further with every try even if they get reduced to level 0 firepower they can still progress and get far in this game. In fact one of the long plays I saw on YouTube the entire game was played with 0 upgrade firepower and the guy just went straight through it. So it is possible to get far in this game and upgrading and waiting there for the 300,000 barrier, it's given us 3 lives and it's possible to acquire the lives just by surviving in this game but it's a long road ahead to get to the 600,000 barrier to give us 4 lives. You can see the variety of the levels is pretty samey from level to level and maybe it's a shame that there are only 3 levels in the game but you can see the landscape does change periodically and it just about offers enough variety to keep this very interesting and the player's eyes will be darting around the screen looking for bullets which are very well defined with a very nice colour cycling effect there so they stand out on any background and so the upgrades on offer are very powerful and are also accompanied by great sound effects to give away that power Unfortunately, I really should be activating, but I failed and that's lost another life. If I'd have activated the invulnerability shield now, we'd be on level 3, but unfortunately not. Luckily, we don't travel all the way back in the level, and the end point there is right there, so we can use up all those smart bombs and get rid of the alien, 
and hopefully preserve that energy upgrade because there are very few upgrades on the next level which is so much harder than level 2. It may surprise you to learn that there are virtually infinite levels in this game. When the player gets through the third and final level, which we are just about to enter, then they will loop back to level one, where they will find the bullet speed is a little faster, and the enemy waves may be a little faster as well. But we are not going to loop the game once, I'm afraid and looping at the end of this level is entirely possible even with this amount of upgrade but unfortunately with level 1 firepower that is significantly reduced at this point the scores are really increased by those large enemies there and you can destroy those for a great score and hopefully we can work towards an extra life but again you really do need the greatest firepower to get rid of all these enemies and that gives the player confidence if they don't, then they'll be struggling, and back to level zero there, but still surviving. So unlike Swiv, the hits from the enemies don't destroy us point blank, yes we can survive. That to my mind is a very good thing, because it keeps the player on their toes, and hopefully they will find upgrades to continue. So you can see the playability is very smooth in this game and it encourages the player because the attack waves don't vary every time you play the game and are very easy to memorize. You can see unfortunately the backgrounds are not as good as many of the vertical shooters on the Amiga and that's slightly a shame because they could have done loading backgrounds like Swiv but they didn't. The colour scheme has been used to great effect on some of these levels but perhaps the second level is a little too blue and this one is just a little too blue and red and yes there are other better graphics performers on the Amiga but for playability and being able to see those bullets there and those pretty easy enemy attack waves then you can't get much better and yes even at this stage even though the enemies are crowding the screen the action doesn't feel packed and the player always has a chance so I give this game higher praise simply because of the playability and the fact that well we're struggling to activate there but usually we can activate our way out of trouble. I really appreciate this great musical soundtrack and of course this array of tremendously crafted sound effects to go along with the blasting shooting action is great and it's well done. Although sometimes the Amiga struggles to play the music and the sound effects together. this level does become more varied later on and we will find end of level bosses are plenty as well the boss that we've seen already plus a huge boss at the end which I've actually never seen except on the long plays so Hybris has a lot good going for it it's not the toppest rated ever on the Amiga but it certainly has fond memories for many people and it certainly is great jumping shooting action Moving on to the scores, Amiga User International originally gave this game 70%, Amiga Format gave it 82, The One gave this game 88%, CMBG gave it 90%, and Amiga Computing actually gave this 91% in issue number 8, January 1989. They claimed Hybris was one of the best vertical shooters that they had found in a long time and that included the many coin-up conversions. I think that Hybris has got a lot going for it. The music, the sound effects and the playability is great and the levels do build up as we continue and introduce the player to more and more difficult enemies and so it's, it's not boring and it always gives the player a break periodically so they don't feel like they're out on a limb. 
Unfortunately, it doesn't get over 8% in my book, simply because there are better graphic quality shooters out there, and even Swiv had just the same playability, but maybe Swiv was just a little bit better in some respects, mainly because of the disc load, which gave us so much variety. Meanwhile, on the Amiga, I've died. That means we are presented with a high score entry system, which means we have to scroll all the way back to the beginning to enter our initials. Yes, the high score entry is a little fiddly, and you can see the A is highlighted in red, and that gives away the actual letter which we need to pick. So let's highlight those letters, and then we need to scroll all the way down to enter. No, we cannot press the enter key. We must choose that from the scroller. And again, it even gives us a break because it allows us to continue playing the game. But that's another high score from me that was scored during the Lemon EAB International Games Competition. And so that's a new high score. If we wait for the credits to roll, then we'll get to see that. I hope to see you again in another play guide sometime soon. Thank you.